Um, there was an interesting study done on, they, they, had, they took 400 Finnish athletes and uh, they looked at what were the leading causes of burnout amongst athletes. And what they found was that the leading cause of burnout was not a physical occurrence, it was the fact that athletes felt as though they were operating in a controlling and pressuring structure where they're unable to effectively have two-way communication with their coach. And so what that means is that imagine that if you turned up to practice and instead of you saying to your coach, oh coach, you know, my leg is killing me, you know, it may be cork from the weekend, you haven't gotten over it or maybe you're just really fatigued or you're mentally just exhausted and your coach didn't take that into account to the point where they say, you know what, get out on the field and train like everyone else. You know, where the athlete therefore feels like they had such a low level of personal control over their situation that uh, that was found to be the leading cause of burnout. You know, one of the first questions our coach used to ask us every single time we turned up to training, we had as a process, before you wake up, before you get out of bed in the morning, your alarm goes off, it goes off at about five o'clock in the morning or even just before. You let your heart rate come down from that initial shock of the alarm beeping. And then once your heart rate comes, comes back down, you take your heart rate, right? If it's more than sort of eight beats above what it normally should be, all right, your heart rate, you go to your coach the next morning and you turn up at training and coach says, how's everyone feeling? It's the first thing he says, guys, the program's on the backboard, it's set for the next month. Every week in absolute detail, down to the percentage time you're going to spend at every heart rate zone. Uh, every work piece is on there, everything in the program is there. But that is subject to change at a moment's notice. As soon as the guy said, coach, heart rate's 10 beats above normal, it's right, right, you're out of the boat, um, jump on the ergo, let's modify your session. There was always that possibility, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so an athlete never felt like they didn't have control over their situation, always felt like the coach cared. I know we talk about Generation Y and we talk about how maybe they haven't learnt some of these lessons, so it's sort of our job to teach them. You know, I understand where you're coming from, every coach talks about it. You know, they are less likely to respond to a command and control style of leadership. You know, because they've grown up in a, um, in a time when they've questioned their leadership authority of others. Why? There's a good reason for it, by the way. Well, they've, well not so much. It's because they've grown up um, seeing how supposed leaders are actually behaving. Now, for younger generations, so, you know, I'm Generation X. If, you, if you're under the age of, I think it's 29... Uh, you're a Generation Y between sort of um, 15, 15 and 29, Generation Y, millennial generation underneath that. But in that generation, they grew up with the internet as just what you do. Social networking, the internet, access to information, whereas, you know, I actually remember when the internet started, you know, at university. It's this thing called the internet. You could go and research information on the internet. You know, I remember doing that in 96. Uh, but it's different now, isn't it? And so, you know, media and how, how leaders are exposed in the media is different now to how it ever was before. Like I said, so maybe it's a good thing they question authority figures. Until, you know, prove that you're credible and your reputation and your character and all of that sort of stuff. And prove that you're credible and you're competent to do your job properly. You know, I think it's a challenging issue.